Welcome yeah. after Bodega Nights. I'm Jao. We called for a recording this week and Miko and Paolo showed up. Say hi guys. Hi. Hey. And we also got uh Paolo's brother Lawrence. Say hi. Yo. And his buddy John. Say hi. Hello people. All right. Here so uh have fun. so <laughs> we come in for a show on general geekery and uh we try to keep it PG and don't pee on the floor. What did you said it Whoops. yourself? <laughs> What? The, what? Not peeing on the, the floor? Okay, the floor does not look dirty now, and I see salamanders. That's it. Doesn't help you have dogs as your decoration. But and, they're not peeing on the floor. And that guy from GTA 5. They're not peeing on the floor. I don't care. So how else am I supposed to mark my territory? Um, chalk! No, no, come on! We have chalk! <laughs> we need chalk. It's like olden type stuff. We have chalk? Yeah, I think. Maybe. Um, we can. Or toothpaste. Do... Or hey, hey, how about we just focus on whatever we're doing right now? What yeah, well, we talk about mark my whatever, and you know, marking yeah. your territory, peeing huh? on the floor, it all yeah. fits in. Um, yeah. that, um, yeah. that, um, we could use yellow dolls to mark our territory, like that yellow doll over there. Which, so this is my territory, technically. I know. Perfect for radio. Hold on, I'll get this first. What? What is that thing? It's like an umbrella. It's a monster it's, from the it's anime. A, it's a mo- It's a monster from. All hey. right, it's not your territory anymore. <laughs> okay, so so John just marked his territory with Paulo's doll. <laughs> okay, so technically we have, are now in some kind of weird corporation shared agreement. So like what? That's that not- is your that is your territory. The one thing, the things outside of this room are your territory. The things inside of this room oh, are my territory. Oh, that's my smart. Dream. And welcome to you know yeah. East and West Germany. <laughs> Well, more like east and west. My house, my our house is now divided, and, guys, and I the Berlin. Since we're talking Gold. about geek stuff, let's talk about the DLC map pack of Call of Duty Black Ops Two Zombies Origins. What's your opinion about it? Well, for me, the once it hit Black Ops, it really just got okay. Um, zombies, not. That I right. mean, okay, the zombies part. I mean, the zombies was nice, but the thing I enjoyed was Mobs of the Dead. You know, you're right. That's probably the best map of all the. Call of Duty Black Ops 2. It had the best atmosphere and it was scary. I feel afraid in that map. There's only seeing gameplay about it. Oh no, I mean like what's nice about it was it felt really gangster. I mean you had Alcatraz that then you know you had like the weird there's a weird setting because you're never sure where you are. And by the way, the Easter egg was the best concept there actually. Well which Easter egg that one? Uh, you know that you thought you could escape, but you're actually in deeper crap. Well, I mean, that's the whole thing of the zombie thing. You never win. It's like Tetris. No, you I know. Like, <laughs> the, I know the game. And you just do a little better every time. <laughs> it's just like this. The game makes you think you can escape, finally. Yeah, just like Tetris. <laughs> it makes you think you can win. <laughs> You're gonna make it. You just need that one straight line on it. It's never come. Communists. No. That's why it's a communist game. Because, you know, the Russians knew. We'll make you understand. You never win. You just do a little better. Just like in life, you never win here. So in life, <laughs> even if you're rich, you will never win. No, no, no. You're thinking of a capitalist society. In the communist society, there's no such thing. Oh, so okay. the that's government why wins. The government that's wins. Why your so the is... person hates them. Oh. So there is no. So there is no. The, so there is no winners. They can't win. Are there losers? Yes, everyone loses. No, and nobody loses win. because nobody what. <laughs> so basically, since everyone loses, All everyone right. wins. Actually, okay, back again to Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Zombies. I would just say Call of Duty Blue. Blops. <laughs> Blops. Well, okay, whatever. Blue. Origins, we find it play as the original characters. Like Depsy, Re- Rectofin, Nikolai, for some reason it looks like Reznov, and Takeo, the Japanese guy who doesn't really know anyone plays this guy that much in the original. I don't know, I mean, I enjoy playing Candy. <laughs> who the hell is Candy? Candy, remember when they had the Black Ops where you could be the presidents and things, and wait, you had Castro and things? Wait, wait, Black Ops 3? was in the older Black Ops where the, uh, the zombie mode was in Black. Presidents. It was in the first Black Ops where you could turn into the presidents, base into no, the, president. the president. You had like, uh, what was it? Reagan? Was it? Uh, was it Kennedy or was it Reagan? No, no, it was Kennedy. But wasn't Nixon there? Yeah. No, oh, no, that's yeah. five. The map five. Kennedy, Nixon, Kennedy, Nixon, Mark Lamar, uh, and Castro in the fighting zombies in the Pentagon. See, I mean, that one for me was just the epiphany of, you know, this doesn't make sense, go for it, and... I mean, I mean, when we have the zombie games from Black Ops, that's one thing I appreciate because they finally realize, you know, we don't have to take this <laughs> too care seriously anymore. anymore. Well, <laughs> no, but the biggest issue with the, the latest map is that everything we have went through is just imagination of kids. What? What were you expecting? <laughs> <laughs> it was all a dream. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was all the fascination of little 10-year-old minds. I felt pissed off. Like, come on, why can't you just... <laughs> well, I'm a fan of Mass Effect. I didn't feel that bad about the ending. It pissed me off, though. <laughs> Well, of course, it you know because I, how how plot how many plot holes were in that ending. Yeah. Well, no, the worst. I, what I didn't like the plot holes didn't bother me. What bothered me was you gave me this option, this illusion of free choice in Mass Effect One to Two, then Three. That illusion, yep, it's an illusion. You get nothing. Well, <laughs> nothing changed. Like G Man in Half Life series, he did say the Gordon Freeman. I give you the, the illusion of free choice, which I will, you know, which is not true. <laughs> <laughs> which is why you guys are making comic books. <laughs> <laughs> So wait a minute, our characters are actually following our orders instead because we're the one drawing it and putting the script. Oh, well, no, no. Yeah. you're a bad guy. <laughs> wait, so I treat my characters well. Like, wait, 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 you're right. Dominic's the one with <laughs> right, yeah, so, Our friend uh, is a sadist. All right, 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 right. So um, Lawrence and John uh, are doing a comic book and um, tell us about it. Well, which one? Uh, we uh, have the, uh, the first one they're doing. Oh, Atrom is Lawrence's uh, personal project. Yeah, it's uh, the we are going with a tentative production name for the comic called Atrom Equitas. That's Latin for Dark Justice. Um, <clears throat> it's been a project. The Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, um. <clears throat> Well, they did consult a priest for the Latin. <laughs> anyway, uh... We did. One time. Oh, what's Dark Justice? Hope is day. Ooh! Dude! Oh! Come, oh. come on, man! Hey, that was a good one. Yeah, let's just go with it. Don't worry about it. Okay, this anyway, is... Anyway, uh... Awesome. Right, so I've been Dark Justice. I, I've yeah. been working on this story for a long time, ever since I was in high school. The, and, uh, it started as a, cro- a super crossover fan fiction between all these crazy, interesting, uh... Fantasy was it like Marvel, right? Marvel, I had even Warcraft, their Soul Calibur, the whole bunch, even some anime <laughs> jumped in video games, all, all all fantasy stories and all that. I c- crammed them in, made this crossover fanfic. But then I yeah, made yes. fanfics before. Revelation came up. You can't use these characters at all because they're copyright. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I thought, uh, hey, I could. Pr- I made a lot of original content in this fanfic back in high school. Unlike previous fanfics that I did before, it was majority on the uh, copyrighted material that I used. But here I had a lot of original elements. Locations, characters, gods. Wait, I thought you already had, like, using, like, the characters from all the other, like, series. No, I did, but I also happened... He also, but I also, also happened created to create own... original characters. Oh, okay. Lots of OC stuff. A lot of OCs yeah, yeah. and I, a lot of Lawrence, original I, I have stuff. a feeling your inspiration came from Super Robot Wars. Yes. Partially yes. Partially yes. <laughs> super Robot Wars is because a Japanese Because the game, super, you can get Gundam movie. characters. There's some original characters there as well, so I think I know, Lawrence got, got some of the ideas from that one. Yes, Okay, I did, so actually. nothing from Mugen? <laughs> Mugen, <laughs> I, got, uh, I, I love that kid. Mugen is not, wait, ne- Mugen, isn't Mugen a customizable? In, in, in fairness, <laughs> my yes, brother like never got the chance to play Mugen because I've only watched videos. videos and oh, it's crazy! Well, fun. to be fair, <laughs> though, like, that's the only game fan fan fanfic game that has Carnage as a playable character. Mm. So, Real Lawrence, sorts. you're the um, writer. Yes. And John is the, the artist. penciler, inker, uh, colorist. Y- yes, I'm everything. Now, overall, <laughs> are Apparently, the Apparently, we team. hired some other people to do it. Uh, it's okay to tell the thing. Or not. Uh, yeah, we had a f- couple of friends who came in to do the coloring. Stuff happened. They had to bail. And right. because of that, I'm now the sole editor, draw, uh, artist, and the one who's keeping everything in line. It's very hard. Especially, I have my finals. He wears many hats, but all of them say artist at the end. Royalties. Uh, no, we'll I, get actually, to that I in the future. Pre- <laughs> Beret artist. <laughs> but, uh, well, at least Lawrence promised that after his co- book is done, it's my turn. I have a very good story to tell as well, but it's it's not. I'll tell later. Let's continue. All right, so it's um, so it's like uh, a little indie company that you guys are setting up yes. for like release and publish. Yes. Uh, cool. Uh, we, the, our group is called Enigma Works. Uh, we want to start off making all sorts of stories in all in different kinds of mediums. Uh, starting off with comics at first is the easiest to do, and also I believe and the uh, most time consuming. <laughs> in the, yeah, but then uh, you know I see a lot of potential in comics. I've seen a lot of interest in it. A lot of. Uh, Artists are interested in doing it. People mostly in Manila, but then there are very interested parties here too. And uh, 
uh, in Cebu. I've got the pleasure and honor to meet uh, many of these. One of them is also happens to work for DC. Mm-hmm. My <laughs> friend, Kathy, who is a... Uh, Catherine Lino. Who is a cousin of my best friend in my old list. Shout so, out. What? <laughs> shout <laughs> out. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's hey, well, we got we to shout out to people that... Okay. You know, oh, shout, <laughs> no, shout out. I thought you said, I thought you said shout out. <laughs> okay, no, no, shout I said out. shout out. Sorry, sorry, right. sorry. Anyway. So, yeah, it's an awesome people. And, uh, you know, I just see uh, our personal belief about uh, stuff here in the Philippines when it comes to creatives... Uh, especially when it comes to art stuff, uh, a bit animation, comics, and whatnot. I believe there's so much potential here in the Philippines. Lawrence is right. San Carlos, UP. We have so many artists. It's just that they're they're not. No one's using their potentials very well. Yeah. They don't have an outlet for their talent. Nor do these talented individuals have the right support system or the disciplines given or the necessary um how you say mechanisms oh, to yeah. help them and the institutions to help them achieve their dreams and goals. You know, everybody here in this country thinks that dreams are just some far out daydream and just a far away concept that can't be happened. And those we who... believe all, uh, differently. You know, me and my team, we've gone through so much crap in our individual lives and also in the early years. Trust our, me, I did. Our <laughs> And also in the early months of us working together. Personally, as I started out the Enigma Works, I went through so much crap. But I realized, just pushing on, that this stuff can become real and there's so much potential. I mean, Disney, outsources... People here yeah, in the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, we, we among the most successful comic book artists are Filipino. Yes, but you know we have so much creative power in this small, in this little nation, this archipelago in the in the Pacific. So much concentrated ca- creative capability, yet it's not being used, and our people are just doing the back work of other countries. Yeah, I mean it's great to Isn't be it able time to for us to have our own. Our own? Yeah, I, mean, I mean it's awesome to be a part of those big works and big companies. That's great, all in all. But for goodness sake, we have all this talent, all this potential. Potential, and it's th- and none of it is going to the benefit of the people live here. The we this is those talents came from here. Might as well give back. Might as well place the Philippines in the map along with America and Japan. Well, yeah. I think a big problem there means there are actually a lot of popular series for me. Now, one I remember that's gone now is the Culture Crash thing. It had a nice selection of local stuff. Mm. But one biggest killer was the fact that. When people talk about comics, I mean, it's always been Marvel, DC, that's, the Dark Horse that's a things. Point but when they hear the local ones, they're thinking, who are you? Why should I care? Because that's true, here's that's the true. idea. Here's the reason why, dude. You see our local comics. Awesome. Cover page. When you open it, what in the heck is this? The art is very different from the cover page. It's It's effort, man. Nobody There's a lack of effort. effort. There's a lack mm. of effort in our local publications. Uh, here's the thing. Sadly, our local publications are not done in a similar quality as those in Marvel and DC and so forth. Um, you know, they said if you do your things cheaply, it's cheap. Exactly. And it looks cheap. Exactly. I mean, here's the thing. I Mr. Krabs, differ, Mr. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Krabs is a very good example of that one. It's Spongebob. No, no, no. He's not cheap. He's just on you know, a really, really tight budget. He's cheap. He forces. <laughs> he's <laughs> cheap. He's 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 cheap. <laughs> but 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 the bottom line is that's absolutely true, Miko. You make a very good point. But the thing is, it's because our local artists have not given reason to think otherwise. They've just the works that have been dish been dished out as of late. At least majority of them have n- added more fuel to that notion. There have been a few handful of works that have tried breaking out of that notion. There was this one publication group called Mangaholics. Oh, I know that. They were great. They collected the best artists. Here, the quality but of their sadly, art was outstanding. Their, their best comic was actually Ninja Girl Co. Because it had very good writing and art. The rest had great art, uh, but a the little writing. weak on the writing. So they had <laughs> I mean, seriously, we had a story about Anitos, Philippine mythology, and we had Yggdrasil. So, wait, wait, wait. A Norse tree? <laughs> so you're tra- Wait, wait. So, can hey, I... You know, I'm uh, Evangelion, you know, it, it could work. Wait, wait. So, ba- <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, basically, you're trying to say that... Aside, aside from Ninja Girl Co, all of Mangaholic's other comics suffered the image syndrome. Yes. Hey, 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 image is really 90s, good. 90s. The lo- Rob Liefeld era. <laughs> <laughs> Linkara hates that guy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Rob Liefeld. I love that guy. <laughs> really? You did it? Ironically. <laughs> but, oh wait, 
<laughs> everybody has their own taste. Well, I hope you like Warrior then. <laughs> I, I, I like I like Rob Liefeld ironically. It's oh. like he doesn't know how to draw. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like how you like something makes it so bad. Uh, it's so bad. It's so it's bad. Good. It's good. No, no, it's, it's, like, it's Sharknado. Sadly, no. It's the room. Actually, um, <laughs> like Sharknado. I will, I will not agree with that because when I... The, I'm a I'm a guy who like, okay I had bad portion back then but I improved. Rob had improved. Yeah, he was. <laughs> but like yeah. I, I do have to admit though that the Image comics of the '90s, like some of them were really good. Like Young yeah, Blur. Yeah, like um. No, no. Uh, look at look at um. <laughs> look at look at the art of uh, Todd McFarlane. If you look at the art. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Spawn M- McFarlane. Yeah. Yes. Um. What's what's his name? He does Batman. Uh, Greg Capullo. You look at the art of Greg Capullo. Like those those more like old school Image guys. Um. Before the advent of the idea of the writer being the like oh the most important person in comics now it was the artist yes and the 90s saw in my opinion some of the greatest art that the uh, medium has ever seen yes I completely agree but, uh, I remember there's this one guy in the uh, 90s uh, loved his art so much in Spider he did Spider-Man uh, Mark Bagley really go- great I mean loved that style I always felt that Mark Bagley's art style back in the 90s was the best for Spider-Man whenever it was an issue with Mark Bagley's art for Spidey oh man that was it Um, to add to the point whenever I I think of X-Men, the first image that comes to my, to my mind was the way they were depicted in the 90s comics and the animated series. But which was super Sir gigantic Anger. cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> but then we should be letting John talk about this because he's the artist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rob, it's just that ever since after the 90s, Rob didn't evolve yeah. at all. He just hit the he's, final form. He's final like form. M. Night Shyamala. <laughs> M. Night. So he's also poisoned. <laughs> No, no. It's like this. All right. There is a term in my film class called auteur. Oh, okay, yeah. These are people who have their own theme, motif in their films. They always add it. Rob Liefeld's motif is big muscle and many pockets. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but then, like... But, but, oh, yeah. it, but here's the thing. Days go by, things change. Kids want to see more realistic heroes to connect with. Rob didn't get that memo. <laughs> 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 then, um, run back that there. He, though, I'll give him one credit, though. He made Deadpool, the art wise, not really the personality. Yeah, the personality came from, from somebody else. everybody else. Yeah, like, everybody else. Deadpool was really, like, art wise. Mm, he was. Oh, no, he was a very serious character. Yeah. Very serious too in the Too serious, game. too serious. <laughs> then something happened. Then he got uh, brain aneurysm. <laughs> yeah. um, wait, Thanks to who, his... who was responsible for the brain aneurysm story arc that made him what he is now? The thing uh, with the cancer and all that? Yeah, who made him. Who, uh, who made that story? Again, who wrote it? Got not oh. Rob. All Michael. I know is it, <laughs> no, it was a guy no, 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 who no, denied no. all links between Deadpool and Deathstroke. If this guy come wait, denied wait, wait. with a passion <laughs> that Deadpool was anything but like Deathstroke. So wait, 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 wait. Are you trying to say that after he made the the brain aneurysms, the brain aneurysm cancer storyline that turned Deadpool into what he is now, that uh, fourth wall breaking, crack joking guy? He, you are you trying to say he bailed to DC after that? I don't know, but he denied with all passion that uh, that Deadpool is in no way in relation to Deathstroke. He says that he's supposed to be some sort of d- d- deranged perversion of Spider-Man. But, but actually, in recently... <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I did think that he's like some weird Spider-Man actually, guy. Actually, recently some... they just reckoned the thing and they said Deadpool is like an AR version of Deathstroke. Recently. Recently. No, but not the original creator. He <laughs> denied it with a passion. But then again, it was Rob Liefeld. <laughs> Well, that's, that's and with his many wow. pockets and big yeah. over overly muscular female characters and male characters plus shoulder pads with no with no with no other. Hey, thing. that was the time period. Now the shoulder pads were in. <laughs> when I don't remember that in TV. That was the I'm 90s. pretty sure your parents 90s. do, and they probably want to forget it. But there was a time they were in. <laughs> there was, uh, around there was. the time the Jetsons was actually a popular thing. <laughs> yeah, when the Jetsons were a thing, huge like. <laughs> oh. Or even Dragon Ball, they have these old sets. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I love Piccolo, it's my favorite. Oh, yeah. uh, weighted, uh, weighted clothes. Yes. Okay, so... So anyway, getting back yeah. to the stuff. Uh, yeah, I really... Be- because, you know, we just need more quality works coming out here. And there are so many factors behind why we haven't been getting quality works locally. For one, here's the biggest kicker in my opinion. One big reason why we don't have quality works being locally produced in the Philippines is because the good 
artists and the really good talented ones bail and go for other places Lawrence, but it is an understandable point John is here uh, Lawrence, <laughs> I'm not the only one hello <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, I'll tell you a secret. I was not really good at drawing. You can ask Lawrence over here. I don't, don't, don't. No, no, no I mean, my art, my head, I had a very big head. Okay. Well, we all have big heads. Well, I mean, so, I, 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 weirdly, I went, you, went, you made Chibi? No, no, I, I, I was not really. Is that Kingdom Hearts type? Yeah. Demon. So, essentially. So Disney. Yes. So, uh, so, Disney proportions. No, it's more like. Here's the kicker, okay? When I started working on Atrom, I realized uh, suddenly something hit me in the head. Oh my god, I'll, people will be reading this thing and we're looking at my artwork. I must do something about myself. And because of that one, I had to go to a men- I had a mental... Breakdown? No, no, no. no, no my, <laughs> Crisis of confidence? No, mental journey in my brain, going to look for the me inside to find out what to do with my art stuff. So okay, I, yeah. I explored, I tried... Oh, you had to find yourself. Men- yeah. A Men- mental pil- a pilgrimage, essentially. Yeah. Apparently, myself is a demonic uh, god with three eyes. <laughs> well, yeah, like, dig deep and find, yeah. like, your style, right? Yeah, and uh, so I tried... I did a journey. I tried um, realistic style. I snap it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried that weird anime style, but looks like serial. It didn't work. And I, I was thinking, why would I use this in Atom? Yeah. <laughs> so I decided, screw that, and I just went to the YouTube and I found this good artist and he did a demo on how to draw stuff and I got my basis on that one which which I sort of managed to copy then I from throughout the years it became something like what I'm doing right now okay so, so it's a, it's a so classic definitely. manga style but with a lot of great touches um, uh, it's hard to si- just describe it in words because it's really beautiful the the art the line art is something really manga style but then but then we put in well we color the pages fully and then guys I just gotta say it's beautiful it's like a painting by the way page. I gotta thank Lawrence and Dominic because Dominic uh, another great guy <laughs> another great uh, member of the team really awesome helped us a lot uh, was with me for the past two years helping me set up this stuff we've been doing a lot of great stuff uh, not a lot of stuff couldn't have been done without his help yeah I have to thank this guy because I think it's he was pushing me to become better to do a good art stuff you're welcome <laughs> Right, so, um, when does your first issue come out? Hopefully by next year. We're, all, um, we're, we're, we're like done, but... We're just doing the finishing it, touches right now. Like uh, finding a printer to print And also not comic. mention the, the one we established a while ago in the first minute of the podcast. I am the only guy in this in the coloring and editing, so... So it's going to take a bit. <laughs> right. yeah. But then, uh, there, yeah, hopefully there by... There's a three-man outfit right now, so it's yeah. Lawrence, John, and Nick. Uh, Nick. No, you could call me Kamen Rider Triple. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're Kamen no, no, you're Kamen Rider Infinity. <laughs> because I have a lot of stuff. I'm, I have a lot of diamond rings no, no, right no. now. <laughs> no, 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 you have a lot of wizard rings. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> no, even, ca- even cards. I like Ryuki more than wizard. Okay, fine. Right, so, um, give us the elevator pitch for the series. It is what I would say, call as a over-the-top fantasy. Okay. What well, no, we not in the comedy sense. More like uh, Tokusatsu. Epic. Epic. Tokusatsu with a little super robot inspiration and hardcore. Imagine getting the classic elements of a fantasy and inject it with god steroids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Captain America's right there. <laughs> so, uh, all I can say for the story right now is... <coughs> If you took, like, the arms of Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld and put them together. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more on the magical aspects, but uh, sorry. No, no, actually, anyone's free to make a fan art of that if they want. But... You said steroids, you see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like steroids. Actually, the, mu- the, insane, don't take it too the, insane, the insane muscle physics is only good for a specific character, not all characters. Yeah, 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 of course. But anyway, uh, getting back... Uh, but getting back... <coughs> Um, what you're gonna see in the first issue is just barely the the very tiny tip of this huge epic that we're trying to start. Yeah. This is just the first, first 
story of a large epic uh, that I'd been dreaming to make. I planned, I made this huge universe, this huge world, which I plan to paint many stories in. And we're just making the first one. It's just uh, as a e to ease the audience, to introduce them to the mythos and to the world, and also to introduce them to the first major story arc and first in major influential characters. Is that, is and after that, we're gonna expose more and more. Um, uh, it's too early for me to say more about the story, because uh, we're still finishing it up, and we're still f a little far from the re initial release, but you know, uh, we're gonna do some major awesome stuff, and it's going to be the first of hopefully many other stories in this saga, and uh, first story of many that me and the guys and wh whoever else will join us in Enigma Works to make. Uh, we have a lot going on for what we're doing here with Atrom. This this here is more than just a, a story or some creative outfit that me and the guys started out as just for fun or to start a business. No, no, no. It's more than that. It is a consolidation of many years of dreaming and, uh, and effort. I an effort and belief of doing more. We believe that dreams can become real as long as you never give up on them and give it your best shot. I mean, nothing comes easy in this world. You have to work hard for it and I believe... Sadly, no one, nobody here gets that idea. Well, we are going to try to teach them otherwise. Because I believe... Because we want to be able to give <coughs> to people the chance to make their dreams more than just simple concepts and ideas. We want them to be able to gain the fulfillment and joy that we've been able to gain <coughs> for ourselves as we were going on with this journey, making this comic and conceptualizing other comics. You know, dreams have so much importance in one's life. It is a guiding light that brings us to higher and better things. Things. And I believe that that's something we can teach people in what we're doing here. We want to give that to people. We want to spread that around. Let them be able to make their dream stories and comics and make this something big. It's really ambitious what we want to do. We want this, well, God willing, we want this to be so big like Marvel, Disney, whatever, but... You know, it's something I believe that this country deserves because we have so much creative talent here and we deserve to be on the map Go. because we have so much potent and wonderful talent, sincerely good people and talented people to make such quality stories rather than just constantly rewriting and repackaging the same um, used up dramas and betrayal romance stories in our teleseries and movies or oh. those overly done corny weird comedies or so forth. Okay. In relation to what my to some of the things that my brother said, I would like to quote Miko on something in with regards to this. As with regards, Miko looks at Paolo <laughs> with for example uh, with intense like Ooh, I wonder I wonder what's this with, with regards to say what you mentioned about how thing about how getting to a to a great spot to a level of success is concerned. Your adage, uh, your adage really w works well into this. The only easy day was yesterday. Oh yeah, and of course, I mean the one thing about great ideas. I mean, we there are actually I've, I've worked with lots of people, and we've always had these great ideas. But the biggest issue in the end, especially when it comes to comics, I'm sure Jao knows this really well, is <laughs> the publishing part. When you actually do have hard print, mm. how do you get to the market? I mean, that's been the biggest oh. thing. Because yeah. <laughs> that has... when's the last time you really remember seeing a comic book store, like a legitimate Dedicated comic book store in all the malls around? Yes, there. yes, Mo that's absolutely <clears throat> true. Uh, that's a very good point, actually. But I believe the key to that is just a very good, strong, and aggressive marketing plan. Because I have to be honest, our local com that's one huge thing that our local creators have lacked. A very good and effective marketing plan. And good and effective marketing plans are not always expensive. You just need to think out of the box and find ways to be, to, uh, how say, make yourself known, get awareness out there, and be effective. Um, as I a, mean, as a bit of an example to his point, Dark Souls, Dark Souls, despite being in a different medium, video games, did really well solely out of the word, out of word of mouth. And Minecraft did great with the word of mouth. Oh, they had a zero oh, budget yes. campaign. <laughs> yes! In yes. essence, in essence, word of mouth r <clears throat> helps quite a bit. Because one, it costs you nothing, and two, that is that is basically marketing that is generated by the goodwill that you've given to the community. Exactly, and there's more to that than just that. Uh, we plan to make a very aggressive and widespread marketing scheme. Uh, too early for me to say because we are still working on the arrangements and uh, you know uh, talking to our publisher on how to work it and all that. Um, 
So the long and short of it is, we're going to change the world. Hi, as the Japanese say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, are you uh, ever going to touch the e-comics? Are you ever going to... Yes, we're... Con- actually, our idea is that every old issue of this comic will be put in the internet. Okay. We, okay. we plan to, we are good, lo- looking thing. into digital distribution because we know it's the in thing now and we want to have a wide reach of the uh, worst in, works. Uh, in another fairness. But digi- we wish to start with print because we believe let's oh. start our first comic, our, let's start our, let's let our comics go as comics were made since the beginning of time. Uh, in paper. Print it out. And besides, you can't collect data. Um, you can, can only collect um, something uh, solid. Um, in fairness, I could actually argue that the first comics were actually written on stone by cavemen. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Alright! Uh, okay. I've been corrected, but it'll be too cumbersome to make our stuff in stone. Um, John, I'm... learn how to use that chisel. <laughs> And secondly, <laughs> and secondly, Wait, going the chop, a chopstick or something. Se- no, no. And secondly, going the e-comics approach with the with uh, older issues is actually really helpful because it kind of fixes the availability dilemma. Yes, because like right now. Again, different medium, but it still is pertinent. Right now, personally, I am really in, um, as, uh, I, as Bok mentioned in a previous podcast about that old Ghostbusters video game. The one on the disc. <laughs> the good one. Not Sanctum of Sign. Not Sanctum of Sign. The thing is, I've been, the thing is, I saw a copy at Data Blitz about a few weeks ago. I visited there, I think, last weekend, and the copy is gone. The thing is, that game is not on PlayStation Network. So, also now. so right now, I am currently in a big quandary, and, uh, well, not so much a dilemma, but I'm already starting to, I'm raising a lot of question marks on how in the world am I going to get and, you know, critique this game. In- because of the fact that I can't, I don't can't play it. Basically, I can't find, I can't get it. Basically, the the what? Basically, I've heard a lot of crap being thrown to at a digital digital distribution, especially in gaming. But in reality, digital distribution has one really good advantage, and that is fixing the availability problem. Yes, I can. Shipping agree. details. <laughs> yes, I completely agree. Oh, we, we were we we're planning to go widespread all all the possible routes. Uh, because our because we just wanna you know get the story out there. Of course, trying to make a little money because we're trying to make this a legit business. Well, but I mean, then... it's a business. You have to make not just a little money. You have to profit. find a way to not just profit, sustain but well, grow. Sustain. Sustain. Yes, sustain, sustain it. grow. Because it. you're not gonna be an NGO here or like. <laughs> it's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. <laughs> you come under so much fire from the. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We don't want... I... ask Congress for pork Bro- barrel, brother. I do not want. It. It's simple. We won't go for a pork barrel. We'll just go for beef barrel. Oh, come on, buns now! <laughs> well, I like eating pan, you know, pan. You know, I want you're bread. beginning to become like that girl in Rooster Teeth. <laughs> Barbara. Barbara <laughs> Duncan. <Duncombe. laughs> the voice of Yang and Ruby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, Lawrence, you're burning that. Have I, you seen I know. the last episode? It's just that I like... I hate those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want those bullies. I don't oh. No, I can't tell because I want to wait until episode 16 so that Lawrence will have a, will have a marathon. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Thank, you, thank you. Thank because I'll wait for episode, episode... Monty did say episode 16 is the midpoint for first. In fa- Ruby, awesome show. Check it out. Um, in fairness to Ru- in fairness to Ruby, the episodes are not very long, so I'm waiting for episode 20 before I try anything. No, you you have to wait. For I suggest 16. It's a midpoint. I want it before I wa- a major release. Or you know, what? I'll wait for it to finish, then I'll watch everything. I... Come on, really? It's nice to watch it. The I am patient and I am preoccupied with video games. Okay. <laughs> All right. So anyway, I was playing GTA earlier. <laughs> I was playing GTA. I was all yeah, and I was also... everybody was, and I was also playing. Little Big Planet. Wait, how was um? How was the online mode? Did you mention that? Oh, oh, they, oh I can tell you what online mode is. Tedious. It's so long. <laughs> I mean, I can't skip the intro. What? what? Oh, yeah, can't. you can't skip the intro. It's one of those forced um, cutscenes. Like and is it like every time you hey, die? Least, how, how long? Hey, is it hey, at least it's not uh, a see, Kojima cutscene. So how bored was I? Oh my gosh, thirty I minutes. Think, I, those I, kinds I, of cutscenes. I think it was fifteen <laughs> minutes of nothing but seeing them riding. Still a city. Miko, Miko, switch popcorn. Yeah. We're going for popcorn chicken. See? Hey, no Kojima cutscene, so you know, at least we didn't have to like uh, sit well, down the thirty minutes. I know minutes. it's not a half life, but at well, least give me a chance to skip. A well, I've. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was playing the 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 Half Life. Um, I was playing Half Life again recently, uh, and that intro one? was so long. Well, like you just on that train? Oh, oh gosh, a tram. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, you know, yeah. no, I, I it's no clip that thing. Like, look around. Okay, what's going on here? Got to do something else. <laughs> like, go to the bathroom. You I, know, I, all prepare I do a sandwich. is add impulse one on one and start and start shooting at other people. <laughs> Wait, so you didn't have any problems with like server lag and that, like with um, GTA Online? No, the not, thing is, not for and for now, because I didn't, um, I had no patience to play the game because I want, <laughs> I want to play single player. Well, so he went out, and made himself a sandwich. You know? I never, I've never touched the online mode, and the thing is, I've only heard really we- weird and bad stuff happening. Character, like characters getting lost. Single player save data is getting corrupted, ba- basic, basically preventing you from accessing an area that is pretty much needed if you want to do the last mission. Right, so which is- our um, our tagline for Channel 14 is "Last in news, first in opinion." Um, we're gonna be breaking that because you have to start playing Grand Theft Auto Online. Uh, yeah, so right now we're, I can't comment on Grand I think Paolo here but... wants to wait and, until Rockstar starts. No, no, no. Dude, dude, if you if you play in October, they're going to give you $500,000 in game currency. It's, Octo- yep. it's October. It's October. It's October, and the thing is, I kind of swore off of uh, Grand Theft Auto well, 5 you because just of a while ago, so that's no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, you broke your own commitment! <laughs> I did not break. Oh, hey, okay. guys, I did not break the commitment because I am done with my finals. Okay. Oh, really? Sure, sure. Uh, I'm not done with my fa- finals that much. I'm still doing my film thesis. At least you didn't commit to yourself something like that. Right, so give me I- examples of other auteurs apart from Rob Liefeld. <laughs> In the comic industry? In um in, in film, we're, we're reviewing you. We're reviewing you. Okay, film. There is uh, Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick, right? Mm-hmm. Of course. Then there is Spielberg. Arguably. He is still an author. Okay. George Lucas, in a way, he's not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we all know that. Every the story behind that, everybody. <laughs> oh dear, Chris George Skull. Lucas. Why? And why also- did you? Why did you? You ruined thirteen thirteen. It died because of you. Why? And also the another author is. Hmm. I ran out of it. Oh yeah, the best of all them, Alfred. Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock, right? Mm. And like he you was. You also argue Orson Welles as well. Hmm. Yeah. He's a director also. <coughs> huh. Come on, Orson Welles, the, the guy who made the world panic. With yeah, his, yeah, 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 with exactly. His War of the Worlds radio broadcast. Well, hey, to be fair, that was a little too, that was just a bit of a hyperbole. I mean, it, it wasn't that much. No, of a it panic. was no, no, it was more of mass media. No, it was like a mass hysteria. No, not and even it wasn't even that much hysteria. I mean, it actually, was really. I, I think it much. was. You know why? So, People were starting breaking TVs out of stores. They were that's, probably doing that in the forehead. It's probably Detroit. <laughs> well, yeah, that's not. Wait, wait, it might have been like a localized wait, wait, thing. Wait, wait. Apart from Detroit, what other areas would have done that? I don't know, LA. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm, yeah, they're crazy. Las Vegas will do that. Some well, Vegas, they're crazy. I don't think Vegas was really up there. I think it was still a desert or something there. But oh, it, it was one of those things where it wasn't as widespread as it was reported. Reported on um, eventually. The, the news, they over exaggerate things. Yeah, but at the same time, it wasn't just a small localized panic because it was syndicated or it, it was broadcast on um, national radio in the U.S. at the time. Yeah. So you know there were people worried. If I'm but correct, it, it was wasn't all, Armageddon. If I am correct, it was also syndicated on some <laughs> news channels. Also, back, right? I could just imagine how much canned food was bought during that time. <laughs> I could ju- I could imagine how, how much, much ammo was stored in the basement. <laughs> What well, the, I oh, them sounders! You're gonna like par- pray for the zombie apocalypse and you like mean alien a, invasion, a Romero, alien invasion, Otur. or some Romero, Otur. George Romero, in the horror genre, not really in other genres. <laughs> And there, okay. and uh, we, I don't think Philippines is Otur. I'm not sure. Uh, oh yeah, we think we do. Uh, Marilu Diaz Abaya. Uh, L- Lin- Lino Broca as a Lino Broca, yeah. And yeah. Ishmael Bernal as a Artur. You can even put Manuel Conde as a Artur as well. Mm-hmm. They are, they are our own Artur. Sadly, we, I don't, I hope that we can have those in the modern times of Philippines. Ah, in time. Anyway. But, we, but, but who knows? Maybe we'll breed them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that sounds good. <laughs> that, like, you know, it's like, you know, like in house t- type deal, you know? Uh, anyway. But we're like, it's getting a bit racy. <laughs> okay, okay, let's end there, let's end there, let's end there. Let's end that. Let's, let's like, let, stop right there, man, stop right there. Anyway, here's the thing. Um, I'm matching Pokemon. I'm having, I'm having fun go. with my thesis. Actually. So Ditto and Ditto. Uh, what, what's your, Ditto. what's your thesis on? Oh, I'm, I'm, I am doing a film essay with this 
Filipino horror film called Blood. It's called Night or Blood Drinkers or Jesus Hunters for some reason. All right. There's, there's many alternate names. The fudge. So what is the real name? Chocolate. Kulay ang it's Tagalog. It's Tagalog version of the Blood. It's called the Night. Okay. Sanguine. It's a it's a horror it's a horror romance film. But my this is is arguing is this. It's a camp film. Ca- camp style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. But then you could argue that most Filipino horror is camp anyway. True, but yeah, not all horror. There are good horrors like Shatter Rock, Shake Rattle and Roll. The yeah, first yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, the like the vast, not the new the first of the what the six? It's six, seven now. <laughs> I, the first four. My my yeah. baby nephew watched one of those movies. It's like and he was like watching it, and he was like totally unfazed and he was like only like two years old <laughs> which ne- okay which one was it Nathan oh my gosh no wonder he became so intelligent but then it isn't even like um, it isn't even like limited to Filipino horror though no not no Ca- I mean, like, camp style is everywhere actually yeah, like, but I'll tell you one thing there is two kinds of camp style okay. there's the indirect camp style and the direct camp style and here's the thing direct camp style is like those parody films like scary movie yeah yeah airplane <laughs> hot shot because they are they they know they're making fun of Rambo like that. Yeah, and meet the Spartans. Yeah, that one. <laughs> oh, oh God. Indirect camp <laughs> is like the happening of M Night Shyamalan. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you, you could tr- sort of like scream in no, a way. Is, no, 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 it's not. Is the Hangover indirect camp? No, it's camp. It, it's direct. It's, meant camp. To it's be. direct camp because it's a comedy. Okay. okay. No, it's like this. Indirect camp is like the movie is supposed to be a serious, you know, genre, but because they they failed at acting, writing, or directing, it became a comedy instead. So, so not a B movie essentially. It's like they really tried and Their they best. messed up. They messed so, up. So, like Glass Airbender, would that be like one? Yes. It. <laughs> Yeah, like, among so um, many others, Shantanito. we have been well, versed with many. was awesome in its <laughs> own weird you way. The, the best. room. <laughs> here's the, the best room. Here's the best examples. The room. Yeah, you're right. One of the, the, room. the room. I, I didn't hit the... Birdemic. I Birdemic is really... And yeah. also... Birdemic 2. Every B-movie action, comedy, or horror in the entire universe. <laughs> Especially the one me and Lawrence watch review. It's called The Replacement... I, uh, Dominic, Dominic usually laugh at this one, but he was really angry with the film. Here's the thing, it's like some sort of action horribly film. done action movie, where it's like supposed to feature these guys. Uh, for, for the, the, the main yeah. character was the guy who was the villain in the first Expendables. Okay. Oh yeah, that guy. Forgot his <laughs> name. Uh, him, he was the main hero. And then he I plays see he was there. I see. But, but yeah. in the DVD cover of that movie, Ice-T, his picture, was replaced by some random black dude who appeared, who appeared in the movie as a goon. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Are you serious? Yes, in the main cover, in all the, all the posters of this movie, in that black dude goon who just appeared in two scenes and died immediately was Ice-T. Ice-T only became, was, only placed in any of these imagery for the in advertising the, in that menu yeah. screen but of the, the DVD. the problem is that Ice-T died in the first half. <laughs> Hey, you know someone that was raised... Uh, they all look about the same, right? I'm sure <laughs> some, oh, I'm, oh, come on, really? I'm sure it was some random Southerner tap. Uh, and here's the plot. Like, oh, like, you know, you know the plot. One terrorist managed to hostage the president. And here's the problem. The, the FBI cannot handle this one guy. So Bruce Willis saved the day, or it's a rip off of that one. Bruce Willis saved the day. It was a, it was a rip off of Die Hard. They <laughs> like they tried, they tried to par, they tried to get the the thing where uh, McCain. he went scaled down a building using with, a hose, or using a hose, yeah. and another time he scaled down a elevator shaft. Yeah, with, with a, a with a badly done flamethrower effect. But then this got time, the guy tried to scale down an elevator with a hose. Yeah. Combining the two scenes. <laughs> and this, With, this... In a horrible flamethrower prop. The flamethrower looked like just random, you know, like those bur- those blow torches you use for cooking. <laughs> yeah. And they just added an ex- extra propane tank to make it, like, <laughs> bro, shoot bro, stronger flame. You or know, something. bro, when you're about to describe the whole going down the elevator with a host thing, I was a- almost, I was r- I was writhing in horror thinking that instead of a host, they were, he was uh, climbing down using someone's intestines. <laughs> Dude, come on, we have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
No, and I was like, here's the thing, okay? The terrorist is Middle Eastern. He sounds French. <laughs> what? Well, he, Algeria. He, they was giving Wait. him, they Wait, gave okay. him a shoddy French accent oh and he was God. supposed to be some Middle Eastern, e- some Mid- great evil Middle Eastern terrorist this, type guy. This sounds like guile. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I am sure American. Oh, yeah, I, also, I wish to go and fight for the United States. Oh, by the States. way, you can also add Mortal Kombat Armageddon as a camp film as well. Oh, what about the Bollywood films? Like the Bollywood no, action they, films? No, they intended for that. They, they, they know they're snakes, so I don't really call them camp. They're camp, but direct camp. Okay. Also, um, like it, Kara, you know? um yes. uh, direct and indirect camp <coughs> has to do with... <laughs> the intention of your creator more than it does with the output of the film. It's more like this. My my teacher in film told me this uh, thing. You have a genre. You, there's two there's two coin. There's two sides of coin in genre. Right. Horror and comedy are, are both in the same coin. Mm-hmm. If you fail to do the requirements of comedy, it will become a horror. Mm-hmm. If you fail to do a horror requirement, it will become a comedy. True with that. How does how does the first one work? Like if you if you fail at um horror, oh wait, if you fail at comedy, it becomes horror. Well, like this, too much dark, too too serious. Very awful. Oh, Very awful. okay. And yeah. re- reverse that to horror, too much slapstick. Well, yeah, I mean, like horror, I, I can I can see where that comes in. Because but. well, to be, f- it's actually. It's kind of ironic that this guy's making a horror film, but the end is said making a comedy, which is comedy is usually the hardest to make right. in general if done if it's, if done focusedly. But comedy actually emerges better if it's done indirectly. Is it like dra- that movie dragged me to hell. Though I mean, I didn't understand whether that movie was a horror or a comedy. Yeah, it was confusing. I think. I don't know if it's, if it's camp. I have to watch the film again to confirm. But based on how confused I am, I think I'll call it otherwise, indirectly. Because <laughs> I remember like us watching the trailer. I thought, hey, it's going to be one of these funny, like, uh, co- these summer comedies. Like this. Nope, nope, nope. Summer comedies don't have this. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I watched the film. Why am I laughing? Oh, God, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the, the Trevor Phillips that, in all of us is awakening. The point is like this. <laughs> Lord okay. Riley has I'll risen give, from the sea. I'll use an example here again. The room. Okay. You're tearing me apart. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hit it. I didn't hit it. You, you too, please. <laughs> Whenever anybody mentions it, I just have to quote the line. I'm sorry. It's a okay, thing. Okay, here's the thing. Tommy was so... Oh yes, Tommy Wiseau, the the actor, the director, the producer, and co-producer. How you do that? I don't know how. <laughs> okay. Ah, he cloned himself. Please don't add it. Dude. Oh, you're. I mean, you're one department right now. Uh, I, I, I'm coming right here, triple. There. No, no, you're in. I, I said infinity. I have doing three roles. I'm only. <laughs> Technically, you're doing more. Uh, okay, here's the thing. Okay, okay, back in the end of that. Right. So Tommy actually tried to make a serious. A film about betrayal and suicide. Yeah, yeah. And here's the problem of the film now. Because Tommy doesn't want anybody to act the main character but himself and his <laughs> shitty acting, here's the thing now. Here's the, here's the problem now. If you break one of the factors of a serious film, especially a drama, first, what well, first factor is broken. Acting was broken. Everyone in the film was like either high or they were like unsure what they're doing. Tommy, no question there. <laughs> he was probably high. He was probably very high. <laughs> number, number, number two. Number two is the screenwriting and the cinematography is lazy. It 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 becomes redundant and absurd. It, you've seen oh, the scene. Yeah. They're in the same location, and and also in the part of the rooftop, there's a, there's this blue screen in the background. That's why there's no wind blowing the hair. <laughs> so logic was broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And number three is this one. Everyone in the film was too serious of their roles. They were, they were, they were putting a lot of effort to look good. They don't, they're not putting effort to make the film look good. Okay, so it was like, um, I have to be better than everybody else and not all of the actors working together for the betterment of the film as yeah. a whole. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Remember that character, Denny? Yeah. We're, I'm, co- I'm confused with this character. Is he, uh, is he a weird, innocent person or he is, uh, Guy who has a weird fetishes. He was confusing. That's another kicker, kicker. Yeah, and um, who who wrote the film? It was uh, Tommy was so right again. <laughs> he can't um direct. He can't act. He can't write. <laughs> he can't write. Um, See? he can't. Well, he can executive produce. The film didn't come out. <laughs> Oh, at the very least. At the very and least. And here's the fact. In the theater, you only got $2. Really? But until recently, when Nostalgia Critic really 
bring this film to the the ground. Yeah, yeah, like it, beat it up. gained a cult classic status. So oh. t- Tommy earned back more than two million. So yeah, wait, it's, it's like when you look at um, when you watch YouTube, you look for uh, the room tearing me apart, Lisa. Yeah. Like you have a you have a scene of like that um that scene you have a video of that scene being um shown in a movie yeah. house and as you're tearing me apart Lisa the line comes in like everybody in the cinema yells you're tearing me apart Lisa it is the most amazing thing I've ever seen <laughs> well, <I'm> also- <coughs> And here's the basis of is my he dead? thesis. This is a theory that that there is theories in film. Yes, yeah, sadly there is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of there is a there theory are. of basic concepts. I'm sure there concepts. are theories in making cheese. Hey, whatever. <laughs> okay, yeah. There is a theory of basic concepts. This is where reality meets fantasy. Okay. Um, in short, you before in the olden times of film, people always. Some people prefer reality, documentary stuff. Some people people prefer uh, fantasy. Those are like you know over the top uh, action films or like that. Okay. You know, uh-huh. in the past they're not they can't mix well, but con- nowadays they are mixed together. Already. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's when basic concepts kicks in. If you fail to do something with the other one, the entire film will become something else. That's the that's the thing. Camp. That's what reason of camp. Okay. Alright. And many Filipino films suffered that. As well. All right. Sadly, we most of our camp films are not really that funny, <laughs> even if they're indirect. Oh. Okay. Well, some yeah, are yeah. funny, but I don't know. There is something there that makes you annoyed than laughing at it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see where you're coming from with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I will agree with what my teacher said. The older films during the '90s or '80s, I don't know. Um, they were way better than our films now. Like Filipino movies, of, yeah. like like the Lino Broca sort yes. of period. Yeah, they had I can they see had soul inside them. They had effort. I don't know what happened to us. Well, I think that would be simple. I mean, people had to make money. I mean, the biggest problem in the Philippines is the film industry is an industry. They see it. No, if we do this, we can get more people coming in. But there'll be a time where they'll, they'll regret that actually. Yeah, because the new generation are smarter. Well, no, I mean, we have a new generation who can appreciate more, but if you look at the mass market, yeah. what are they going to go for? I mean, this is the mass market who finds, still finds Wawa Wee, you know, fun. Soon enough, but there will be a time where everybody will get bored of it. But when? I mean, and by that time, will we be able to recover or we end well, up just I, being, you know, outsourced I hope work? That, I hope that that's why we have that's to... That's why they have their company and we have our crappy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, that's one thing we aim <laughs> We voice our opinions to the world via the internet. And the louder you are, the more correct you will be. Yes! Caps that, lock. <laughs> that is why I am speaking with exclamation point. One. And by the way, you suck. Why do I suck? You suck. You know, I'm about to say something that I shouldn't be saying right now because you it would be un PG. You better not, or else. <laughs> yeah, man, we have fifth graders. Would you say that show. again? Don't make me go if you style on your. Oh, would you like to try that? I will. <laughs> I can go god mode, man. If I have with the wizard driver with yeah, me. You remember <laughs> Boss and Kaiser armor? I'm undestructible. Godzilla, then there. If it's fun. Like, yeah, uh, random me. YouTube comment. <laughs> <laughs> I am a, first. <laughs> I am a hybrid Saiyan Cya, crypt. Uh, a hybrid Saiyan Kryptonian. Didn't this, you know, crypto? Didn't the Super Saiyans kind of rip off Krypton? Uh, right. What? No. What, no. Think about it this way. I have Superman's powered by the Sun thing and sup- and Super Saiyan five. Oof. Yeah, which is Does still beaten by weaker, Superman, dude. or no? <laughs> That's still beaten by or, Superman. No, no, no. no I, I know. Sensor I'm beams. mixing so that'd be the awesome. two. Awesome. Like Superman would sense the things that could be like, oh. oh, pop that in. Oh, <laughs> I'm mixing the no, two. No, at man. least <laughs> though the recent Dragon Ball movie might have a form that might be able to contain live action one or the new. <laughs> not anime- you, dare. <laughs> Let's not Evolution. talk about that. <laughs> That's a camp film, and it's indirect, and it's not worth it's mentioning. In, wait, it's indirect? They were, really? they were too serious with their roles. I, wait, 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 wait. Evolution was camp? Indirect camp. Oh, gosh. Really? Come on. So, that, can we watch... We should probably watch the movie again under that context. Wait, that this, this, gives, this gives me, like... With this, Yo, thank you so much for that, because this gives us an entirely new, like, framework... To discuss stuff that is so bad it's good but done accidentally. Yeah, mm. yeah, you can use that because here's a here's a here's a fact. Many of the indirect camp films are way funnier than those direct ones. Yes, yes. In, in the same way that the room is a lot funnier than Scary Movie. Yeah. Sorry, oh, yeah. Wayans Brothers. <laughs> 
And uh, no, no, don't be sorry. They they overstay the welcome in the film industry, so it's not. <laughs> It's like Simpsons. I think Simpsons way better than them. Yeah. It's a cartoon. That that tells us a different story. Uh, uh, the Simpsons. So yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, there was this uh, in uh, uh, the, in the, the in the new Dragon Ball movie. I think it was released. Uh, you know, Bill's the one last year. Yeah. Uh, ba- Dragon Ball Z: Battle of Gods. Yeah, all those uh, awesome, awesome stuff. The yeah. creator Akira Toriyama. Akira. Yeah. I I wikied it. Sorry, bro. Your fine, your fine. your correction was not a correction. It's Akira Toriyama. Fine, I wikied it. Fine, dun, fine. Dun, dun. I you know, checked on anime is never ever wrong. Right. And then I and, then, and I, yeah. then I backed it up with Anime News Network. Haha. Fine, fine, fine. Never wrong. Akira Toriyama. Akira Toriyama <laughs> came back in and added this movie, and it's canon to the Seriously? Dragon Ball manga. Because it's set after the Boo saga. We can all forget GT. <laughs> <laughs> you know what happened to that black haired sign. Yep. <laughs> and also, yep. the mission, he's kind of naked if you think about it. Who's naked? Super Saiyan 4. A Super Saiyan 4, the one that GT did. Yes. Stop, okay, let's stop there before I start spewing things related to things that would be highly un PG. Mm-hmm.